Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be checking out Crop Out, which is a free Unreal Engine 5.2 RTS game template that just released. You can download it for free, dig it apart, learn from it, and even build upon the project itself. Crop Out comes with a bunch of new Unreal Engine features, including common UI, enhanced input, geometry script, and so much more. Everything that is spawned into the level is procedurally generated, and it even includes a save and load system. It is a complete complete game project and it's even designed to be cross-platform so it has support for PC, mobile, console, input, and UI. So in this video we're going to be diving into the project, I'm going to show you guys around. Now before we get into the video I want to really quickly tell you about my multiplayer survival game course. Learn how to make a multiplayer survival game inside of Unreal Engine 5. We create things like an inventory system, crafting system, an open world map that uses PCG to procedurally spawn all the foliage on the map, complete building system harvesting system. There's over 50 plus hours of course content. So head over to smartpoly.teachable.com and get an early access discount on the course. The price of the course will be raised later on. So make sure you don't miss out. So check the link in the description below or head over to smartpoly.teachable.com to learn more. So to download the free project, you can head over to the samples tab on the Epic Games launcher, or you can open up the Unreal Engine Marketplace tab. So on the samples tab here, if you scroll down, you can find the project right here. Just click on it it will take you to the marketplace page and you can just go ahead and you know, click on the free or add it to your cart and click check out then you can actually go ahead and create the project so currently this is only supported for unreal engine 5.2 so just note this will only work for that version so here we are loaded inside of the main map so let's go ahead and hit play so we have this top down rts view and the controls are quite simple you have the wasd to move around and then you have your mouse cursor right here basically how it works is if you ever played age of empires it's quite simple you start out with your own town center right here and you have these little villagers that you can control and you have all the different resources around you and basically you just have to send out your villagers to gather these resources there are various different resources across the map which you can explore and to send your villager off to harvest a specific resource just click and select the villager then drag where you want it to go and it will automatically walk over to the resource and start harvesting it once the villager collects a certain amount it will go ahead and bring that resource back to your town center and it will update on your UI so we have these three different resource types we have the food which is represented by this little pumpkin icon and we have wood and stone you need these resources so you can build various structures and to build structures you have this little build button on the bottom of your screen here this will pop open a window with all the different structures that you can build and for the different structure types you can see how many resources are required to build them we first have a shrub and tree I think these are decorations however I could be wrong you might be able to plant these and harvest them for more resources but we have the house structure this allows you to to grow your village and basically after you build it it will add two more villagers to your town but doing so you have to be cautious because basically if you scale up your village where you have a lot of villagers you also need to scale up your food production because each villagers eat about three food every 24 seconds so if you run out of food it's game over now you can send your villagers to harvest these berry bushes and that will collect more food however you also want to ramp up your food production by using these various crops so we have corn wheat to lettuce and pumpkins and it's very nice that they included these different types basically it's all about resource management and collection there aren't really any enemy AI to fight or attack so really the game is all about collecting resources and to win the game you have to collect and harvest enough resources while not running out of food so that you can build the monument and if you ever played Age of Empires this is sort of like the wonder basically it costs a lot of resources here so it's 500 stone and 500 wood but once you place the structure down and it is built you essentially win the game so it's a very cool sample project and it includes a lot more I mean we have this little pause menu with some basic options it even has a nice main menu level complete with a save and load system so you can resume your previous game or start a new game from scratch it's designed with the new enhanced input system and common UI plugin so it has support for gamepad PC and mobile controls and it's a pretty neat sample project I mean I love the stylized graphics all the assets are very very well done and it's worthy to mention that this entire level that you see here is procedurally generated so the entire shape of the island changes if you start 
a completely new game from scratch, as well as things like the village location and also all of the resource locations. Now looking underneath the hood here, everything is very neatly designed and with blueprints. So this is using blueprint interfaces. All the code is very nice, neat and organized and even commented. And I know a lot of you might be wondering, is this actually set up for multiplayer? And it's just purely single player game. However, I mean, that doesn't stop you from modifying the project, modifying the code and converting it into your own game. I mean, I can think of a lot of cool stuff to add to it. Maybe things like, you know, fog of war, like they have an age of empires where you have to explore the entire map to see where the resource locations are. And you can also add different units, like a scout that rides on a horse and also different structures like a mining facility, lumber mill, and maybe even add enemy AI that you have to attack. Now this is all designed in the back end with blueprints and it's pretty well done. Epic put out a video on the YouTube channel that deep dives into all of the blueprint systems and how it all works. And I'm basically just going to give you a summary of how this works based on that video. Basically you have your game mode class, which handles all of the gameplay logic, everything from loading the save file to spawning in the villagers. You can also check out the BP villager blueprint, which has a very nice, cute villager model. You can see here on the event graph, we have this looping event. So every 24 seconds, we call this function eat, which basically the villager consumes about three food every 24 seconds. And again, if you run out of food, you lose the game. So you can see here the event graph has all of his job logic, which tells the villager you know, which job he is assigned to. And they're using this data table here. And if we open this up, this shows all the various jobs on the island. So we have the idle, which is just, you know, the default no job. Then we have the collect food, collect wood or stone farming, and then the building structures. What's neat is that they're using behavior trees for each of these jobs. So you can see in the data table entry, they have a reference to the specific behavior tree for that job. And we'll check that out here in a second but they also have the animation for that job and a cool little custom hat and tool for that job. So these little items get attached to the villager character and they play this little animation when they're performing that job. Now getting back into the behavior tree, honestly, I haven't really played around much with behavior trees, but if you open this up, you can see the basic villager behavior logic. So we have the basic, you know, move to resource and collect it. Once a resource is obtained, the villager will move back to the town hall and deposit that resource there. We even also have some logic to find the next available resource if they finished harvesting all the resources in their area. And this is just the resource behavior tree. They also have one for farming and for building structures. Now, if you guys are more interested in the free assets that you get, there are a ton of cool stylized props. They are very detailed. And another thing that I absolutely love about this is the different building meshes. So they have different meshes to show you the different stages of a certain structure being built. So you can see here, we have the basic supplies and foundation of the house. So stage one, and we have the framework being built. So you have the second stage. And then of course you have the finished product or the completed structure. So it's just cool to see all this stuff and that they included these little details into the game. Now moving on to the island map, this is all procedurally generated when you start the game. So the island is actually a blueprint and it's generated using the geometry script plugin. So you can open up this blueprint and see how it's all designed and how they set it up. And what they said in the showcase video is that this blueprint is actually in a plugin. So you can take this plugin and migrate it into your own project and use the same procedural island blueprint in your own separate project if you wanted to. There's a lot of other cool stuff to dig into like the UI. They use the common UI plugin, which is a fairly new system introduced into Unreal Engine 5. It's used for creating multi layered user interfaces with cross-platform support, which brings us to the point that this project was set up for PC, mobile, and console support. So all the controls and input are already set up. So maybe in a future video, I'll have to try packaging this to an Android device and testing it out. I've actually done the process before and it's fairly straightforward. Anyways, there's a lot more other stuff to check out in this project, like how all the VFX is all created with Niagara systems. I mean, things like the little seagulls, the wind swishes, all that stuff is created with Niagara. But I think that is going to be it for this video. I just wanted to quickly show you guys this new free sample project that you can download right now for Unreal Engine 5.2. 
and all the features that come included. And you've always got to appreciate them putting in the effort for a simple project like this. I mean, simple when you compare it to a project like the Matrix Awakens demo, but it just shows you a real world application of some of the new features available in Unreal Engine 5.2. Anyways, that is going to be it for this video. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below, what type of stuff you would like to add to this game. Let me know. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.